Hey everyone, this is Swapnil Mathur for ThinkWidget.com and we met up and had a conversation with Mr. Andrew Poe who is the Senior Director of Canon's Imaging and Communication Products. So essentially what he handles for Canon India is everything to do with cameras, lenses, right from the very basic point of view, all the way up to the professional DSLRs. So we spoke to him about some of the concerns that we had and the questions we had regarding Canon's operations in India. So without further ado, here's our conversation with Mr. Andrew Cole. We'd like to know a little bit more about you. Mm -hmm. So if you could share some interesting information with us and viewers. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Andrew Ko and uh, I'm from Singapore. Okay. Uh, married with three kids and one wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Minor <laughs> detail. <laughs> okay. Right. And uh, I've been... Uh, officially with Canon India for uh, about three months now. Okay. Yeah. So, in your role with Canon India, what exactly is the purview of your responsibility over here? Okay. Uh, I'm the group head for the Image Communication Products Group or ICP Group. Okay. And that essentially covers all the camera and right. video products. So, and when you say camera, it's everything from a basic point and shoot to the professional DSLRs? Yes. yes. And even the cinema line, I believe. Uh, not the cinema not line. The cinema. Uh, although, the administratively, yes, but you know, not the cinema line. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but I, I used to handle the cinema EOS when I was in Singapore, so I'm okay. quite familiar with it. You're quite it. familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and what exactly was your role, your previous role rather, in Singapore, Canon Singapore? Oh, my last role with Canon Singapore, I was the general manager mm -hmm. for two groups, the ICP group, the Image Communication right. Product group, and the CSP, which is the, uh, the printing group. Okay. The, the consumer printer group. So, both the input and output. So, I'm right. quite familiar with input and output. Right. And in, in Singapore, there's group under one one group called the consumer imaging group. So, all, all the consumer products. All right. Yeah. So, uh, the work you did in Singapore, right, and now that you're in India, mm -hmm. do you feel that there is a little difference in the way the two countries work? Uh, in terms of not just the business side of mm. internal Canon business, but also in terms of the consumers? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I've come from a very small country to a huge country. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in terms of size-wise, uh, much bigger. Ge geographically, of course, also, India is so much bigger right. than, than Singapore. In Singapore, whether it's a north, south, east or west, I think the consumer is the same. You know? right. it's, it's all in one place. Yeah. But in, in India, a uh, uh, consumer in the south is different from the one in the north or different from the east. Yeah, so th that's the most obvious uh, difference. Uh, of course, the second thing that is very different is at the, at the different stage or level of uh, familiarity with uh, photography. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Singapore is quite a matured market okay. for uh, photographers. In fact, I would, I would rank Singapore as one of the top four worldwide wow. uh, and this is based on the adoption rate of new gadgets new technologies uh, and uh, for example mirrorless cameras mm -hmm. Singapore has one of the highest adoption rates right uh, so the, the four countries it will be Japan Hong Kong Singapore and probably Taiwan Ta not the US I don't think the US is uh, Taking up mirrorless as much okay. uh, as uh, these four countries. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, interesting. Yeah. So, um, and so in India, you'd specifically be handling the camera division, right? Mm. Okay. Yes. So, all right. So now that we're speaking about cameras, um, and let's is lenses also a part of the same system, yeah, yeah, right? Of course. Yeah. So. My first question would be, how are the prices of mm. these cameras and lenses in India determined? Mm. Mm. Uh, are you determining them based on the US or Japan? Okay. Um, much, much as we try to uh, standardize the prices worldwide, uh, certain difficulties uh, are inherent. You know, for example, different based on the different exchange rates. Right. I mean, 
when I first came to India in May, the rupee was 55 against the US dollar. US dollar right. you know, two weeks or, or three weeks ago, it was 68. Yeah. So can you imagine you know, how is it? We cannot be changing prices all the time to try to yeah. unify. So I think number one is the different exchange rates which, which happen all the time. So because of that, I think it is difficult. Uh, secondly, is also the issue of uh, import duty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for example, in India, we have import duties for compact cameras. We have even higher import duty for DSLR and lens. Oh. Okay. lens. And then also there is the other issue of uh, you can call it what goods and services tax or VAT value added tax. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which, for example, a country like Hong Kong mm -hmm. has no import duty. Has no, uh, you know, yeah. So again, you know that that uh, okay. you know uh, changes everything again. So I think it's it's quite a difficult issue. Not so easy to resolve. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if you're aware about this, but somewhere around eight months ago, mm. the prices of lenses were hiked by almost thirty percent mm. in India. Mm. And at that time, they, it wasn't so bad. The rupee was not fluctuating as much as it is right mm. now. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of people were asking us why this happened, especially seeing how Nikon and Sony, other competitors, mm. were not mm. raising the prices. Mm. So, would you like to shed some light on the matter? I cannot compare, I cannot uh, comment on what competitors are doing or not doing mm -hmm. because they, they have their own strategy. Right. You know, maybe Sony or Nikon has a different strategy. But I think for us, uh, we are here for the long run. We we want to provide a sustainable business, <coughs> right. you know. So it's a balance between, uh, you know, market share and also uh, sustain sustainability. You know, we have to keep the, the organization running. So I think it was a number of factors that came into play, right. and probably I don't know the 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 exchange rate probably came into play too. You know. Okay. Like, uh, yeah. But a 30% hike is quite significant because, I, in fact, personally, I was mm. contemplating on buying the 85 1.8, uh, which was about uh, 23,000 at the time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then I went to the store, it was 32. I'm like, wait, I can't get that. But <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, it, it's really um, because a lot of consumers want to know what signs they should look out for that, you know, a piece of equipment is going to go up in price mm, so mm. that they can hasten their purchase. So, because a lot of people, like I held back from buying that lens initially. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people did the same, you know, with a lot of other cameras and other lenses. So, if there's anything that you could recommend, like how can a buyer make that decision, whether to buy it now or wait for some time? <laughs> I, uh, whenever people ask me, when's the best time to buy? I always, my answer is the same, buy it now. Why delay your gratification, <laughs> you know? Uh, you okay. know, because the three or six months spent waiting could have been spent enjoying the product, That's right. right? You know, so for mm -hmm. us, I think uh, a product is not about the, of course, it's about the price, right. but it's not about the cheapest price. It's about the value that it can provide you. Okay. I mean, it, if it gives you the value, example, okay, if I may talk about a non-camera product, uh, you talk about Apple releasing the iPhone 5S. Mm -hmm. So people complain, why is it expensive? But if you think it brings you value now, buy it now. Right. Uh, just for information, Singapore is one of the first countries in the world to launch it. You know, uh, okay. And people queue up for a few days. Right. For yeah. it. Why do you need to be the first one to own it? But they see some intrinsic value in it. And they think that, hey, you know, I'm going to enjoy it while others don't have it. So fine. Right. It's okay. So it's about value. And okay. same, same for camera products. I think it's about providing value. If someone feels that it will enrich their lives, it will give value. Yeah. Okay. So India, I'm sure you're aware of this, is a very price sensitive market. Mm. And with that hike in pricing, uh, initially with the lenses and lately mm. even the DSLRs have gone up, some of mm. them at least. Um, do, have you seen it, do your sales numbers take a hit in some way? Um, hard to attribute uh, to, you know, directly to the price hike. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what we try to do is still to provide value to the customers. For example, 
uh, we increased the DSLR certain models by 6%, but okay. at the same time, we introduced a new uh, 600D double zoom kit. Right. And we priced it uh, very attractively, competitively. Okay. So, you know, in a, in a way, it's like, hey, we are providing you with alternative. And like, uh, for example, the 100D and 700D, we did not uh, increase the price. So at least we right. just do that. So mm -hmm. I think we, we try to have, find a balance. Right. Yeah. Every day that 7D just gets farther and farther away from my reach. <laughs> which, which one? The 7D. 7D. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. But anyway, so... Um, <laughs> A lot of our readers also have questions about the service mm. uh, that they get. Now, a lot of them ask us, you know, if, if I send a camera for repair mm. and I the service sheet that I get says that so-and-so repairs were performed, mm. were the repairs actually performed? You know, So oh. there have been many cases, not with cameras, uh, but in other products where, let's say, a cell phone screen broke uh -huh. and the service center says we replaced the screen and the LCD, mm. but only they replaced the screen because the LCD was fine but they charge for both. Okay. Uh, so these cases keep happening in India, right? Uh, so my question is, what sort of assurance does Canon give you know, to its customers about the service that Canon provides after sales service? Oh, okay. This is the first time I, I heard about this. But uh, in Canon, uh, the service is not a profit, it's not a revenue generator. Okay. So... Maybe some companies are doing it to generate revenue to for profitability. But for us, the, the service is part of our overall package. Okay. When we sell a camera, just like we provide the warranty and everything else, it's all together. So there's no reason for us to do that. Uh, okay. To for generate revenue. Frankly, you know, that is not our purpose. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we have a wide network of service. So yeah. I will share with you the details about right. yeah. where all our service centers are. Okay. No competition. Has and and, yeah. and they're all Canon owned yes. or are they yes. Sub yes. subsidiary? Yes, Canon owned. Yes. They have yeah. a huge yeah. service. So we so, have a, the, the kind of centers, the number of centers we have, no competition has. Yeah. That's why I'll share the yeah. details with you. I used to live right next to the one in Irvine uh, near LA. Okay. So I used to visit the campus very often. Oh. It's like so it's you, as far you, as the you used to. You used to study there? Or you yeah, I used to study there. So uh, I used to work in Santa Monica. Oh, wow. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, like a yeah. beautiful place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite, still my favorite place. I yeah, yeah. But I, I like Orange County too. I used to right. drive to Mission Viejo weekends. And I was there. the least of Viejo. Really? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Studying there. One of the best places. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to know. <laughs> so um, you spoke about warranty. Um, mm. And this is my biggest question. All my gear was bought in the US and a lot of okay. people do that. You know, they buy, they go on a trip, they buy a lens mm -hmm. and they buy a camera. But the warranty does not translate to India. No. Um, why is that the case? Um, why? Actually, uh, it's not just in India. When I was in Singapore, people asked me the same thing too. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. Canon globally does not... Uh, the warranty is only honored in the country of purchase, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Nikon, I believe, gives one year's international warranty uh, uh, of their product. Okay, I don't know about okay. India, but I think in Singapore, if you uh, for certain countries, mm -hmm. if you prefer international warranty, you can exchange the one year local warranty for that countries but only for six months so okay. it's a six month warranty but in Singapore we have it but in yes. India I don't know whether we have this scheme mm -hmm. uh, so we still give customers a choice so if they want they can exchange their one year local warranty for six, six months, months for the particular country that they right. are going to or that they are, they are staying in but I think as a general rule I think we uh, we want to provide the customers with the, the local you know uh, the whole service mm -hmm. locally here. I mean, you buy here, we provide you with the warranty here, we provide you with the service here. I think. Right. Yeah. But, but, but the question comes because, let's say if I'm a student, I'm, I mean, I'm an Indian, I buy a camera here and three months later I move to the US for my studies mm -hmm. and it's a three-month-old camera and let's say the shutter button gets stuck. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, it's, it's a new camera. I feel bad that even though it's in warranty, it's not in warranty in mm -hmm. the US. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have the same issue. When I mm. came back, uh, my 40D was pretty much brand new. Mm -hmm. Touch wood, I didn't have any problems with it. But my constant fear was that if I if something went wrong, I'd mm. have to pay a lot of money to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. you know? So there are these concerns. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, so just wanted to understand what's the thinking behind, uh, you know, a very country specific warranty system. Oh, this this is this is a Canon Inc. Uh, decision. So okay. uh, I'm not in a position to comment on it. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so service warranty, and then obviously the next question: CPS, okay. uh, Canon Professional Service. Do we have the same uh, facility in India? We have, <coughs> but we are in the midst of uh, revamping it and uh, uh, improving upon it. Improving. Okay. Uh, because I think. Again, different countries have different levels of service for CPS. So I think we are trying to have a more standardized uh, thing uh, across Asia, at least. Across Asia. Yeah, you know that CPS. I mean, you can like uh, go across countries. It right. extends across countries. Right. So I think then we're trying to standardize. Uh, but again, the difficulty is, for example, uh, in certain countries, the requirement for a CPS to be a CPS member, you must have at least two bodies, right. two professional bodies, and right. two professional lens. But maybe in India is different because uh, in India, uh, uh, maybe a, a someone who shoots for a living may not e- even be using the one series or the five series. You know, he's just using a forty D or seventy D. Yeah, so. We are trying to and the usage of lenses will also be yeah, and the lens is so okay. different. You know, mm-hmm. for example, in Singapore, I think uh, to qualify you need two L lenses. Okay, if I'm not wrong, but here probably to to expect two L lenses maybe right. Uh, That's true. So I think we try to customize and you know for each country. I think. Okay, yeah. so what's the requirement for India? If will you have one in place right now? I understand you're in the I, midst of revamping it, but yeah, we're in the midst of revamping. But I don't know what's the current one. I I have no idea. Uh, I think maybe we'll check on this. That'd be great. Yeah. And what sort of benefits would one get? Uh, universally, uh, uh, number one, you get backup, mm-hmm. uh, and then you get express service. If I'm not wrong, and. Loan. I think in loan, uh, the the uh, you you have availability to loan sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Free sensor cleaning. Yeah, I think <laughs> right. so. I check. think so. I need to check. I know that the, for example, again, I have to refer back to the Singapore example. Uh, the F one. Uh, so during important events, major, especially like sporting events, right? Let's say F one Olympics. And things like this, then that's where we set up a service depot. And right. That's where the CPS members. Then you really need the backup. You need the cleaning. You need the things like this. So, for example, F one, and I use F one because India also has F one. F one happens every year. We set up a depot there, and the CPS members come and you know get their the lens adjusted or calibrated, you know, and clean and and you know and and okay. backup and things like this. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Interesting. Because uh, CPS has always been one of those very niche services that mm. only very select people have known about. And um, in India, there's a lot of photographers who, sh- who shoot for a living mm. and are always shooting. And some of them even have uh, five series or one series bodies, a lot of yeah. lenses. Yeah. So this is something that could benefit them knowing this. Yeah, I, th- I think the challenge is to identify who does it for a living mm-hmm. and how professional is professional? No, because yeah. it says Canon professional for service. Right. So how professional is professional? So again, to now we have a lot of advanced amateurs who who buy the one DX or who buy the five D Mark III. Wow. But they are just shooting for fun, you know. They are not doing for okay. a living. So again, right. then you know, we have to be strict with certain uh, right. criteria too. Okay. So um, this is just sort of coming to a conclusion. Um, I'd like to know about. The various, uh, so you have the point and shoot segment and you yep. have the DSLR segment. Mm-hmm. Let's just talk about these two in specific. And so what sort of marketing strategy do you have? We have the festive season coming up. Mm-hmm. And uh, from what I understand, every business, it's about market share, mm-hmm. right? So what is Canon sort of uh, planning for the upcoming months with regards to point and shoot cameras and uh, the DSLRs? Okay. <clears throat> um, I I must correct you on that. that okay. While market share is important, uh, 
I think <coughs> for us, like I mentioned earlier, it has to be a sustain, sustainable uh, and viable business too. Right. So we are not chasing uh, market share, you know, and forsaking all else. Mm-hmm. So it's not an end in itself. Uh, but having said that, of course, the festive season is important. That's where, you know, the consumer spending goes up and everyone's looking to buy. So in the DSR segment, uh, we have uh, introduced a new uh, 600D double zoom kit. Double zoom, yes. yes. So in fact, in fact, we are the only ones now offering this. Uh, the, the, we have two models with double zoom kits, the 1100D and the 600D. Okay. So that is something that is uh, uh, unique. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, proposition that uh, none of competitors have. Uh, for compact cameras, we are putting a bit more focus on our uh, SX series, okay. which is the uh, uh, one seventy. Yeah, which yeah. is the long optical zoom, mm-hmm. and that is uh, because the demand for compact cameras, especially the entry level, mm-hmm. uh, has uh, declined okay. uh, due to you know smartphones and stuff like this. But uh, in the SX category, where we have long optical zoom, I, there is no comparison with uh, smartphones. It's something that you know it, it still uh, uh, is able to hold its ground. So right. that's where we are, we are putting okay. our focus on. So, but what about the G G series, which is mm-hmm. some, because lately with the Sony RX one hundred. Um, and even the X one hundred S from Fuji, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on larger sensors and mm, smaller mm. bodies, and a lot of people are sort of you know realizing that a big sensor makes all the difference. So, what sort of focus are you putting on that? Well, we have the G one X, but again, uh, different countries and different consumers uh, have different requirements. Okay. Uh, in certain countries, in certain more developed countries, our S series is doing very well. Okay. You know, we, we have the S series and now we have the uh, S110. 110. Yeah. Uh, in India, probably not so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in certain countries, the G series is also uh, mm-hmm. very, very popular. Okay. Uh, uh, and I, I guess that has to do with the uh, level of sophistication or understanding of. Uh, uh, camera technology but I, I believe that India is catching up and okay. you, in time you evolve mm-hmm. you know uh, I, I remember the early days where people are just only focused on one thing how many megapixels you know right. but yeah. after a while then they move on to the next level oh megapixel is not everything yeah. sensor size is important then after that they, they look at uh, maybe aperture okay you know I, I need a brighter lens, you know, I need right. a f1.8, f2.0. So over time, I think they, they become <coughs> they become uh, more sophisticated and understanding. Even same with DSLR, it's not just about megapixel there. Yeah, and some companies may claim, oh, we have full HD. But what is your full HD? 720 DPI? Yeah. Uh, 720? Or yeah, 1080p. Or 1080p. Yeah. So, you know, all this comes into play. Right. You know? so, Absolutely. Yeah, I think it will evolve, and you, will, the the the, the uh, consumers will become uh, more knowledgeable over okay. time. Uh, but we have a role to play in in educating and in informing this because I think as a market leader worldwide, mm-hmm. and as the uh, with and with us having all the key technologies, we are in a better position to. To educate, to inform, okay. <clears throat> because we are the only company that makes all the uh, technologies, all the parts ourselves. You know, right? That's true. So, uh, where do you see? Like, how do you see the Indian market right now? Uh, mm. Do you see a lot of focus on entry level point and shoot cameras? Do you see that they tend to focus on you know more basic stuff, or do you see that there's a shift that's happening? So, the shift is happening, um, <clears throat> and it's going to. Uh, build up momentum uh, over time uh, because a lot of uh, uh, people that have been focusing on the compact camera suddenly realize that you now you know the the business has you know declined tremendously but and the the upside to it is that uh, people are now moving towards uh, DSLR which okay. is good for us uh, <clears throat> and this shift has happened in 
many other countries. Mm -hmm. In India, it's just beginning. But okay. you know, it, it will become a, 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 a big shift. Yeah. All right. So, uh, last question. Uh, hmm. What does your photography get comprised of? Oh, okay. <laughs> interesting. interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I... Oh, I must say, first of all, I must state very clearly, I'm not a good photographer. Mm. I can, I appreciate photography, but I don't have the eye for photography. In fact, my wife is a better photographer than me. Uh, okay, in my family, I have a family of five, and we have probably five cameras, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I have... Uh, my daughter uses a XS120, I think. Okay. My elder son uses the EOS 650D. Okay. Uh, and I have another compact camera which my wife uses. I think it's an S95. Power oh, shot wow. S95. And I've brought with me to India uh, my latest acquisition, the EOS 100D. Hmm. Yeah. 100D, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. A lot of people are surprised why 100D. Actually, I, I like the 100D very much. Uh, because maybe over time, I used to shoot with 40D, okay. then I also shot with 7D, then I realized it's getting too heavy for me, and I wanted something light but yet with the capability, so I, I chose the, the 100D, and especially when the 100D, I paired with the new uh, 40mm oh, f2.8 uh, right. lens, it's fantastic, it's so small, it feels like a power shot, but yet, you know. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so I, I like it. Oh, that's cool. So I actually unfortunately skipped out on one question. Okay. And if it's okay, can I bring that yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. It's actually about the mirrorless cameras. Mm. Um, so the EOS M, how, what was the perception when it launched in India? How did you see uh, the camera do very well? Um, so, okay, let me rephrase that. So the EOS M actually came at a very good time. Like that's when the mirrorless camera was starting mm. to pick up mm. in India. Mm. So how do you feel the camera performed with respect to the competition? Did you see satisfactory numbers? Uh, did you see the adoption of the mirrorless system mm. go up as a whole? And do you see that there is potential there? Actually, uh, on the whole, the industry in India, I don't think is uh, adopting or embracing the mirrorless uh, in fact, worldwide, the mirrorless has not really picked up that well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why Canon was... In fact, Canon was the last, last. Uh, major uh, manufacturer to introduce a mirrorless uh, camera because I think we wanted to, to wait and see to see how the take-up rate, the adoption rate. Uh, if you look at the whole world now, uh, most of the world, the adoption rate is still pretty low. Mm -hmm. Not substantial enough. Even in the big market like China, it's still okay. not substantial. And uh, I mentioned earlier about the four countries. The four countries with the highest adoption rates now is uh, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan. Uh, and that's because these countries are you know, very early adopters. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they embrace it. But, and even in India, we see the mirrorless hardly making a dent in the in the bigger scheme of things. Uh, so the EOS M, I think, appeals to a very niche market only to those who can appreciate it and and, 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 and they want it. Uh, I don't know. I was told unofficially by by the by our dealers that oh, people who buy a DSLR feel that you know, DSLR should be big. They want to feel, you know, they're carrying a professional. So the the EOS M is seen as too small. Okay, yeah. it's, it's almost like a compact camera. I I don't know. So interesting. Yeah. I actually shot. Uh, there's this really big band called Infected Mushroom. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to shoot for them in LA for four years. Mm -hmm. And when they came to India, I had the EOS M with me. I was testing it at the time. Mm -hmm. I shot their entire mm -hmm. concert with that. Mm -hmm. and beautiful images. So I mean, I, I it it feels bad because there's a lot of. Uh, unawareness. Yeah, actually, the, the EOS system. M is a fantastic camera because it it has an APS-C sensor. Mm -hmm. So again, market education is very important. For example, when I ask people, "Oh, how is the mirrorless market?" They say, "Oh, your EOS M is so expensive." I say, "Against which model?" 
Oh, against a Nikon J1. I said, do you know a Nikon J1, oh. the sensor size is so small. One inch. Yeah, versus a, a you know, it's different. So there's mirrorless and there's mirrorless. You know, there yeah. are different kinds of mirrors. So again, then there's you know, a four thirds. Yeah, yeah and the understanding and the, the 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 knowledge, I think, is still not as advanced yet. You know, okay. To know what's the difference, you know. For example, if you use a well, you're going to quote me on this. Eh? You use a Nikon, <laughs> you got a problem because when you use the Nikon lens, mm -hmm. you will have to calculate differently. You know, mm. uh, it's not a 1.6, maybe you have to multiply 2.5 or, or, or 2.7, then, you know, it's all messed up. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, EOS M is identical to a DSLR. You yeah. know, if you have been using a, uh, let's say, 1635, you use it, you still get the same same feel. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Interesting. So, is are you at Canon uh, working on it? Maybe educating the masses to this new technology. It is a new technology, and it is actually pretty amazing. It would be really sad if uh, you know it sort of dies out without mark making its mark. Um, I think at Canon we believe in offering uh, choices mm -hmm. to. Uh, our consumer. So, whether you are looking for a compact camera that serves your need, or a compact camera with a long zoom, or DSLR or mirrors, I think we we offer that kind of choice, and we have the technology in all these uh, different areas. Uh, so, uh, it is still there. So, it's uh, of course we will try in uh, our own ways to educate. But I think India is a huge market okay. too. So that that is a challenge for us. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're taking it one step at a time. Okay. So, uh, can we expect any more competitions this year? I believe there was the Canon Photo Marathon that happened earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Is there anything similar you guys are planning? Uh, we have not made any plans as of now. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. nothing concrete yet. So, nothing concrete to, to share. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I need to start preparing to win. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, this has been really enlightening. Thank you so much, Andrew, Thank for you. taking out the time. Thank you, my and pleasure. Being so candid. No? I'm really yeah, happy you didn't say I can't answer that. Um, but that's generally what happens a lot of the times. But, you know, you've been very forthcoming. Uh -huh. So, I really appreciate that. Thank okay. you so much. Thank